Hello friends, welcome back to the shop and uh, Happy New Year. Today is uh, January 1st, 2020, uh, the beginning of a new year, beginning of a new decade. I hope you all have had wonderful, a wonderful holiday season. Uh, as you can see, we're in an unusual spot today for, uh, for these sorts of chats. I'm um, over on the new side of the, the shop. Uh, I'll explain why later. Uh, but uh, before we get into any of that, I just wanted to, 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 to wish you all the best in the new year and uh, hope that everything that you're looking forward to right now uh, becomes a reality for you. It's a time of year when we all sort of want to take stock and, and think about, you know, what it is that we've been doing and what it is that we can do differently and all that. And, you know, I've never been a fan of resolutions because, frankly, I've never been able to keep one. Um, and I don't know that I know anyone that's kept one. But, uh, you know, just thinking about things and you know, maybe maybe approach life a little bit differently. I, I guess that's just human nature when we come to these sorts of milestones and changing of the number of, that you write on your check is, a, is, in a sense, a milestone. So the reason I'm over here is that uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you know my belt sander uh, rebelled, upon, uh, rebelled on me uh, during the week. The uh, tracking mechanism on the belt sander broke, and I'll I'll put some pictures up as I talk about this because I've got the pictures from the uh, that I that I put on Instagram. The tracking mechanism broke, and the belt basically sanded through the side of the sander. Now this is not um, a great deal, really, uh, but it is the one of the primary tools I use for rough shaping of stems. The, uh, the Delta doesn't make these anymore, but um, parts are available, and the choice was to buy a knockoff version, which would be about $300, or buy the parts, the, the part, because we just a bracket that I needed, uh, that was $3.75, so I opted for the bracket, but it will not be available, on, well, it's shipped, but it will not be here until January 8th. So I decided in the meantime then, since I had the thing halfway taken apart, to take it fully apart and replace all the bearings, uh, which I will be very glad that I did once this is all done. I'll have, you know, essentially a new sander, but this has pretty much filled up my workbench and I just don't have room over there to set up the camera and everything, so it was easier to come over here and, and set up for the, for the, the video. Uh, anyway, the, the things are, are going fine, except I can't make stems until January 8th, so it's a bit of a pain, but such is life. So today, uh, you'll notice I'm not smoking anything. Uh, it's because I got something special. So first off, I've got my uh, Hercules pipe, and this is a, a favorite pipe of mine, especially for Burleys. I like it because it's got a lot of depth to it, but it's a broad uh, uh, bowl so that you can actually, I think Burleys smoke better in broad bowls. Uh, larger diameter bowls, but it's deep enough that you can really get a, a nice long smoke out of it. In this, I am going to put something very unique. Um, now this was an idea that I got from our friend uh, Peter, the Smooth Piper. Now you, he probably doesn't know that he gave me the idea, because what, what happened was last year, right around this time, Peter made a video where he opened up a package that a friend had sent him, and in this package was a bag of tobacco, and, you know, we've, we've all done this at some point or the other. You make a, a jar where that little bit of tobacco at the end of the tin, you, you put in that jar and you store it up until you have enough to smoke. And it's never good. And you know. <laughs> So the difference that, that struck me was that this, when Peter was talking about this, this uh, bag of tobacco that the friend had sent, was that he, he did put in everything that he smoked, but he didn't just put in the odds and ends. He put in... Uh, a significant amount of it, uh, I think a pipe full, I don't really remember. And I thought, well, that's that's different, you know, you're not just relying on whatever's left, you're actually sort of consciously creating this. So I decided to, to do something like that this year, and I've created this jar of tobacco. And what I did, starting January 1st of 2019, was I decided that everything I smoked, I was going to donate one bowl's worth of that as long as it was something I liked, I was going to donate one bowl's worth to that jar. And every time I put tobacco in it, I shook it 
really, really good because I wanted to get everything mixed up. If the tobacco was a flake, I, I took extra time rubbing it out because I wanted to distribute as best as possible. Now, the, the decision of what went in there was a little complicated. So, uh, first off, I didn't put any aromatics in there uh, just because aromatics tend to dominate uh, when they go into those sorts of mixes. Uh, I also didn't put in anything that I don't like because that's the big mistake when you're making these things. You think that you're going to put in something you don't like and you're somehow going to make it likable, but the truth is it always winds up tasting like the thing you don't like. So if I don't like it, it didn't go in there. Um, and the things that I was just smoking a lot of, like Carter Hall and, and uh, Haunted Bookshop, I, I didn't put in. Uh, just because then I'd have a big jar of Carter Hall and Haunted Bookshop. So, so these were these were kind of the unique things that I smoked over the course of the year. And I kept track, and I'm going to let you know what was in the the. Th well, actually, let me let me do this. I'll pack a bowl, and we'll get it lit up, and then I'll read what was in it. That might be more interesting to me, because I have no idea what this tastes like. This is the first time I'm. Uh, I'm going to be trying it. It's, um, it's interesting. It's got that sweet fermented um, sort of red Virginia smell. Like the fermented hay kind of smell. That's, that's pretty dominant. Uh, this jar is not, not the best pipe tobacco jar. But it's great. I wanted a big one so I could shake it. Uh, I'll be transferring this into a into another jar um, because I want to use this jar for this year. And I guess the first thing I'll be putting in this would be a bowl's worth of this blend, which I guess I'll call 2019 blend or something like that. Now, as you'll see, this is actually quite an eclectic mix of things, and I have no idea what it's going to taste like. So I'm pretty excited about this. It's like trying a new blend that's entirely composed of blends I've already tried. I don't know, where do I put my lighter? Uh, where I'm not supposed to put it. So let's see. And the initial light is is his burly stems back okay. Burly a break. And why that surprises me knowing me is well, I guess it's no surprise. And definitely some Virginia sweetness in there. But uh no sharpness. It's actually quite a, quite a smooth, well-rounded flavor profile. I wasn't expecting that because it's just kind of random. Of course, the danger in this is that you'll love it and you'll never have it again. Oh, that's nice. So it's good. And maybe this is the reason why it's that's a good idea. It's a, it, I like it because I tend to like blends that are that have a lot of depth to them. That are um, and that's why I like Burleys. You know, Burleys tend to be the base notes in blends. Um, this definitely has a lot of depth to it, but it's got it's got that red Virginia, the fermented red Virginia sweetness that I, I refer to as a as a caramel sweetness. Um, it's got a lot of that, and then it's got a preek kick. Hmm. Well, let me tell you what's in here. I'm sorry, I gotta look it up on my phone, and I'm gonna have to put on my cheaters to actually be able to read it. I kept it in a little. 
those of you who use uh, Android and Gmail, uh, Keep Notes is actually a really neat app because you can directly move things from Gmail into Keep. Uh, and I, I use it to keep all sorts of notes, and one of the notes is my list of tobaccos for my, quote, Mixed Tobacco Jar 2019. Okay, this includes H&H &H Burley Flake, Cornell and Deal Bluegrass, Cornell and Deal Briar Fox, Cornell and Deal Bijou, <laughs> Bunsen Burner, if you remember Bunsen Burner, that's the, uh, the pressed uh, Virginia Perique that I made. Um, in, I, I did a video on that in the middle of the year. Uh, Haunted Bookshop, how did that get in there? Warhorse Ready Cut. Uh, Scudo from 2010. I had a, a sample of a Scudo that was given to me by a friend some time ago. Uh, and it was from 2010. Uh, and I enjoyed smoking that, but also put some in. John Patton Oriental Dusk. Old Gallery. Cornell and Deal Burley Flake Number 1. L.J. Peretti Number 8 Slices. Sir Walter Raleigh. That's an interesting uh, choice. Cornell and Deal, Old Joe Krantz, and Salty Dog. And um, what I know I forgot to put on here, but I know is, is in, this, uh, in this blend, is um, the Three Nuns Green, because I smoked a fair amount of that in the middle of the year. I remember putting it in and thinking I have to add it to the list, so I'll have to do that. Um, so that's a pretty good list of, of tobaccos that I liked. And they really are coming together to make something nice. So I don't know what I'm going to do with this. Am I going to smoke the heck out of it and just finish it up like I would a tin of tobacco or am I going to sort of, you know, partition it out across the year, see how it changes, if it, if it changes at all over the year. It's hard to imagine it would change much because it is very, very mellow right now. So if you'd like to try this, all you have to do is rewind the video, buy those tobaccos, and put one pipe's bowl worth, and it's up to you to figure out what that means, <laughs> into a jar. Of course, you'd have to put it in in that order and wait the same amount of time. But you can't replicate it. That's the beauty of it. Uh, but I highly recommend doing this. Don't, I don't recommend the odds and ends jar of tobacco. It just never works out. It never tastes good. Uh, and I don't recommend putting everything in there because, like I said, you got to be. I, I would avoid aromatics because they're just going to dominate the blend, and, and sometimes wind up tasting a little weird. Uh, taste fine on their own. Mix them with a vapor, and they start to taste odd. Uh, not everything is meant to be a crossover. So. Keep it to things you enjoy. Try to add an equal amount that's approximately one pipe bowl full. Uh, and just add it as you go along during the year. And just make sure to mix it really well. That, that's an important point. Uh, just because otherwise it's you're going to get pockets of stuff. So that's why I use the large jar. And I probably shook it for a good five minutes after each addition. My wife thought I was losing my mind. Which I might have been. Anyway, folks, I... Uh, I just wanted to say hello on New Year's Day. I, I don't really have much to talk about. I told you about my my adventures with the uh, the rebuild of the sander and got to share this holiday blend with you, the 2019 annual blend. I guess uh, I'll come up with a name for it, but I'm going to make this an annual thing. I'm going to uh, I'm going to start a new jar today, and like I said, I'm going to put a bowl full of this into it. Uh, kind of like Guinness always has a little bit of the last batch added in. Best wishes to all of you for a fantastic new year and new decade, and uh, I just hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful day. I'll be back uh, Sunday, so I'll talk to you then. Until then, take care of yourself, and I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.